Hello, and welcome to another video by the Danfoss Software PAE team. This is Ryan, and in this video, we will get started with the basics of the service tool, focusing on the functions a service technician would perform. When it comes to where to get the service tool, installing and licensing, video number 113 covers this using the Update Center. The Update Center is the preferred tool to get all the available plus one content from Danfoss. The Update Center also allows users to get notified about updates to service tool and application files. The Update Center is on the Danfoss website, and a tutorial video on how to use the Update Center is on the Plus One Software YouTube channel, where you can also find other helpful tutorials and how-tos. I will provide a link to the, in the description to the website to the download and the tutorial video. When you have the service tool installed, you will have an icon on your desktop. I'm using version 2021.2, which at the time of this video was the latest version. We recently changed the version numbering convention. Previously, it was a numerical value increasing with major and minor changes and patches. In 2021, we switched to setting the major version to the year it is released. You can have multiple versions installed as long as they are not the same minor version. For example, I have versions 12.1, 12.2, and 2021.1 all installed at the same time. So which version of the service tool should you use? Usually the latest version is the best choice. This ensures compatibility with the latest hardware and software. There could be some cases where the equipment manufacturer gives direction to use a specific version. Always check the system requirements in the release notes to know the requirements of the computer to use with the Plus One service tool. Starting in version 12.1, the system requirements for Plus One service tool says to use a Windows 10 computer. If you have a Windows 7 computer, you will need to use version 12.0 or older. Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7 and Danfoss does not test against it. When you first open the service tool, you will see the start page. This page gives you some options to get started. You can download a file or start a service application. There is also a list of helpful tutorials and how-to videos on our YouTube channel. There are links to open the Update Center, visit our forum, YouTube channel, or create a help desk case. To go to the application view, click on Close Start Page. Here is where most users will get started. In most cases, the first thing you will want to do is connect to a CAN bus on a machine with CAN devices. This will most likely include one of many plus one pieces of hardware Danfoss provides to distributors and OEMs to build their systems and machines. The CAN devices could be on a machine or on your workbench. To connect to a CAN system, you'll need to use a CAN gateway. For Danfoss, a common gateway is a CG150. This is a serial to USB device you can get from your local Danfoss distributor. If you are connecting to a machine, it will already have the 120 ohm terminating resistor needed that goes between the CAN low and CAN high wires of the CAN bus. If you are connecting to devices on your workbench, be sure 120 ohm terminating resistor is in place. Drivers for the USB connecting to your laptop should have been automatically installed when you install the service tool. After we have our CG150 connected to our CAN bus and to our laptop, we can set up the connection. In the top menu, go to communication and click online mode. The service tool will automatically detect the CG150 and try to connect. If there is a good connection, at the bottom of the screen, from left to right, we will see a green dot and connected, and the gateway channel, baud rate, and bus load. 250 kilobits is the default and most common baud rate. On the left system navigation tab, all the ECUs that are seen will be in the ECU list. On the CG150, you will see a green power light, and the amber can light will be flashing. If for any reason the service tool does not connect and the select gateway window does not open automatically, go to the communications menu and click on gateway and then select gateway. Select the CG150 and be sure to, to select the channel that does not say virtual. Make sure the baud rate of the CAN bus you are connecting to is correct. Then click OK. The service tool will attempt again to connect and scan the system for CAN devices. If the connection still fails, with the service tool saying disconnected at the bottom with a red dot and the CG150 has a green power light but no amber can light, check for bad connections and make sure the Danfoss CG150 driver is installed. When you go to select the CG150 in the communications menu, 
be sure the correct CG150 and baud rate is selected. You can also create a help desk case at plus1helpdesk.danfoss.com. Be sure to let us know what version of service tool and hardware you are working with. You can also use the link in the service tool to create a help desk case. In the top menu, click on help, then support, and plus one support web page. This will take you to the web form that you can fill out with the issue you are having and submit it to the Danfoss plus one help desk group. Oftentimes, the LEDs on hardware can be helpful when troubleshooting. In the case of the Danfoss controllers, the red, yellow, and green LEDs can be custom programmed through the application. This means a developer can change when and how the LEDs function. So there's not always a standard for troubleshooting based on the LEDs. Contact the equipment manufacturer to get direction on what the LEDs indicate. One default condition to mention is on SC controllers, the default is for the yellow LED on in the green LED position to be activated for a safety layer in error condition. Danfoss Plus One software has several tools to provide some limitations on who can access and update Danfoss hardware. One of the more common is the tool key. This is a set of numbers and or letters that developers use to ensure the proper users have access to interact with a piece of hardware. Think of it as a password to read and write parameters and update the hardware. The tool key would be provided by the company that built the machine or the application for the controller. Danfoss does not have tool keys for machines built by other manufacturers. When you have connected to your Danfoss device, you will see it in the ECU list in the left panel of the service tool. There are some basic things most users want to do with the service tool. Oftentimes, you will have been given a file to read or write parameters or update a controller. Some of the more common files are LHX, MLHX, HEX, and P1T files. These are used to update a controller. This can be done by clicking on System in the top menu, then File Download. In the File Browser, select your file and the file type. Step through the download wizard. It will automatically detect if there is an ECU it can download to. Most downloads do not take more than a couple minutes, but this will depend on the amount of changes in the update and the speed of the connection. Some other common files are P1D and P1H files. These are pre-made server screens that allow technicians to read and write parameters to a controller. To use a P1D or P1H, on the top menu, click on File, then Open. In the File Browser, select the file type and the file you want to open. After it is loaded, in the left panel you will see more pages under Parameter Pages. These pre-made pages will allow you to read and write parameters. I hope this video helps you get started with the basic features of the Plus One Service Tool. For more information on Plus One software, please remember to visit our forum or help desk, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see our latest video releases. Thank you for listening.